Hello and welcome to another edition of the How to Bet Horse Racing podcast. Ed DeRosa joined by a special guest from Oaklawn Park. Nancy Holthus is with us and we're going to look at the Kentucky Derby points race, the Smarty Jones Stakes, Oaklawn's meet. Nancy, this year we go all the way through not Arkansas Derby Day, but Kentucky Derby Day. Yeah, extremely excited to uh, to kick this one off. 16 total points uh, headed towards that first Saturday in May. So uh, very excited for an opening day stake. Yeah. Uh, a long march uh, through Hot Spring. We have the uh, Smarty Jones, of course, but then the Southwest, the Rebel, and the Arkansas Derby, and uh, very prominent on the Triple Crown scene in years past. I uh, think most recently Belmont Stakes winner, Creator, uh, but, of course, Triple Crown champion, American Pharaoh, and a host of other uh, very admirable performers, including the namesake of this race, uh, Smarty Jones, way back in 2004 uh, for the 100th uh, anniversary of Oaklawn. And things keep trucking along at Hot Springs. It's definitely one of my favorite meets of the year, and I'm looking forward to joining you for opening weekend. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, nine races on opening day, first post of 12:30. Um, so far, I do believe the uh, the weather gods are going to participate uh, accordingly. Um, yeah, the feature on opening day is that $150,000 Smarty Jones and $614,000 of total purses for that opening Friday. So, uh, yeah, very excited to uh, to kick things off with the very first prep towards that Arkansas Derby, the uh, the final goal, local goal towards the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, me me too. Looking forward to seeing it live. Uh, just wanted to start with a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, has it been confirmed where Jack Van Berg uh, is, is going to go? Uh, I know he's also entered in an allowance on Saturday. Well, you know, I actually texted Tom uh, this morning, and he said 50-50. So okay. uh, the the allowance actually looks pretty tough as well <laughs> on Saturday. So um, I'm uh, he's only uh, you know there's not a whole lot of speed in that uh, in the stakes. So it's going to be interesting, um, you know, if he does decide to stay in the Smarty Jones, it might be to his benefit, you know, with the with, with not much speed in that field. So uh, he's, you know, got a little bit of time to, to make his final decision. So as of now, he's he's 50-50. All right. Uh, well, we will uh, handicap the race uh, accordingly with, with him in that with him in for sure at, at 50%. And uh, you mentioning the speed or potential lack thereof, a uh, decent segue uh, to get down to individuals in the field. Uh, Nancy, what's your approach uh, you handicap a lot of races as the paddock analyst at Oaklawn. What, what's your approach when you first open a card and look at a race for the first time? Well, you know, I, I look at, at class, basically, you know, obviously what, what type of, of race it is and whether horses are taking a big step up or a big step down according to a, to what type of, of race that it is and kind of go from there, um, kind of see what, type of horses are uh, are coming into that race, how they have been performing. And uh, you once you kind of get into the meet, you kind of see a, a pattern, so to speak. You know, the last couple of years, uh, we saw trainers that were kind of getting off to a slow start. You know, last year, we did see trainer Norm McKnight, his horses were really racing over a, a, a traditional dirt track for the first time as they've been racing over the synthetic up at Woodbine. This year, that might not be the case because, you know, he had a, a pretty good meet. It took his horses a little while to get adjusted, but, you know, we might see a different trend with that taking place, uh, this being his second year here at Oakland. So, um, you know, last couple of years we saw Villafranco took him a little bit time to uh, to get on a uh, to get on a roll last year. That wasn't the case. So you kind of do see some trends form, and uh, – We'll see if uh, what trend decides to form this year. But as always, Steve Asmussen gets off to a very sharp start, as does the Brad Cox barn. So uh, we might see a, a nice little run for uh, Steve Asmussen. Is had multiple trainers' titles here. Um, might see Brad Cox give him a run for his money here in 2019. Yeah, uh, I definitely think that's a, a race to watch, uh, not only uh, in Oakland but fairgrounds, uh they tussle quite a bit, and uh, Steve Asmussen certainly uh, well represented in 
uh, Brad going to have to wait at least a day uh, before he gets involved in the added money events. But uh, Steve, with three of uh, the nine entrants uh, in this one, so at least a third of the field before scratches, and uh, things uh, kick off with him down on the rail with long range toddy. And you mentioned class, Nancy, which a lot of times in these early points races, you get a lot of maiden winners, uh, maybe a few have tried stakes, a stakes winner or two. Five stakes winners uh, in this field uh, is, is a pretty robust total, uh, I think, for a lot of times when you might see only maiden winners and long range toddy, one of those actually a multiple stakes winner. Uh, Showed a lot of poise after getting shuffled back to win that springboard mile over a stablemate Banquet, who is also in this race. Uh, what are your impressions of Long Range Toddy? Yeah, he's the only two-time stakes winner in the field. Uh, and, you know, he was one of five Steve Asmussen runners in the springboard mile. Uh, he likes to press the pace. He got a perfect stalking trip in that springboard, scored a nice upset at 18 to 1. Uh, I do like those really sharp recent works here at Oaklawn. Uh, most recently on the 14th, 101 flat for 5 8. He was the fastest of 5 of 93 on that particular morning. You definitely can't fault him for being a perfect two for two at the mile distance. And he is certainly, you know, when we stretch out in our series, should he decide to uh, to go for the Southwest and Rebel, he is definitely bred to go those further distances being by Take Charge Indy. So you definitely can't. You have to take a, a closer look at long range toddy, especially being four to one on the morning line. Uh, Richard Aramian knows him well, has been aboard him for his three straight victories. And, uh, you know, if Jack Van Berg does decide to run, it's definitely going to be he and Gray attempt go for that speed. And he will probably more than likely sit just off of those and get that nice, uh, that stocking trip. Yeah, and uh, from the rail, uh, saving ground behind some speed on the outside, I have to think is a positive. Um, before we get to Sleepy Eyes, Todd, uh, it's a good point to ask about that one-mile configuration at Oakland uh, with the, the shorter stretch than some of the distances we'll see as we march toward the Arkansas Derby. Any difference in how the short stretch mile plays versus maybe the traditional routes? Well, you know, it's interesting uh, that short stretches – actually 825 feet. So that ground saving post might actually do him good, allowed him to save a little bit of ground. And, uh, you know, that first turn or that uh, that stretch comes up really, really quickly. And it, we are one of just a few tracks that do have uh, those two different finish lines. So jockeys do have to make that mental note that that very first wire is the one that they have to come up on. Yeah, no question. All right. Uh, well, Sleepy Eyes Todd, and uh, I don't like to be uh, dismissive of horses and stakes, but I will say this is probably my least likely winner of the group. Yeah, he has taken a, a big step up. Um, you know, Sleepy Eyes Todd, David Cabrera aboard for trainer Angel Silva. Uh, the dam has thrown a lot of sprinters, and he did break the maiden in a in a sprint allowance uh, back in late October at Remington. It was going six and a half. Came from off the pace, got up to score by half a length. Is It is a big step up in class for this three-year-old by Patio Prado. Um, does make that stake debut. Um, I'm just going to throw this one out. You know, a lot of people might say, oh, it's, it's going to be a big long shot. I definitely don't fault people for doing so. I, however, am going to have to look elsewhere. Yeah, as uh, someone who will be writing about the race afterwards, certainly wouldn't mind getting to tell the story of a $9,000 purchase on the Derby Trail, but uh, right. we'll have to earn it. Um, you know, is, is inside, and, you know, if, if Jack Van Berg is in especially, maybe – you know, if things completely melt down, he's the one running. Uh, others to prefer in terms of ranking their win chances, including perhaps uh, Super Steed, even money favorite in the Sugar Bowl and did not live up to those expectations after a big win in the slop at Churchill. Uh, you given a mulligan for the Sugar Bowl or do you think this one's going the wrong way? Well, you know what, you, you can kind of look at it a couple different approaches. You can give it the mulligan and uh, Lot, she, he might not have shipped, favored the shipping. So, 
there's a couple different things. You know, this is a homebred for uh, owners Jackson Steed and Michael Presley, and Larry Jones actually trained the dam, Totally Tucker. So, you know, was the beaten favorite, as you mentioned, by seven lengths running fourth, just kind of flattened out in that particular race. So, you know, we'll see uh, how this one returns for Larry Jones, who we're very happy to say is back at Oaklawn Park this year. Does stretch out, though, for the two turns for the very first time, and uh, we'll see how this one recovers. Did run a post of really sharp work, just has that one work, though, since uh, that kind of flattened performance in that Sugar Bowl uh, on January 14th right here at Oakland, a minute and four-fifths was the fourth fastest work on that particular day. So uh, we'll see how Super Steed gets along, and uh, I do like that Larry Jones gets on his own horses still. So, uh, you know, it's it's interesting that he does that. So uh, we'll see how the, uh, how the stretch out does factor for Super Steed. Yeah, I thought uh, that's a good point about shipping in the fairgrounds because uh, did not have any – published works uh, from Churchill uh, and does at least get one uh, now for the three-year-old debut at Oakland. So uh, that, that might be reason enough to, to give the pass. And of course, uh, by Kentucky Derby winner, Super Saver, who ran in the Arkansas Derby the year, uh, he won the Derby. So, you know, a two-turn mile uh, dope and uh, loose of quality mare too. So, uh, middle distances look no problem, and at the right price, I would definitely be willing to forgive the Sugar Bowl. Um, one of the other uh, stakes winners in the group uh, that we mentioned, there were several, is Six Shooter, uh, and talking about uh, people returning, uh, Larry Jones is one of the trainers, and Stewie Elliott, uh, who was the jockey on Smarty Jones, uh, I believe is going to be at Oak Lawn, uh for most of the season, and he gets on this one for Paul Halthus, uh what do you think of Six Shooter, Nancy? Yeah, Six Shooter doing extremely well. If you uh, look back on his form in the springboard, he just had a nightmare trip. And looking a little closer at the chart, you know, he was sitting eighth around that final 16th. He was only running a length behind those front runners and just completely got shut off and uh, – just stopped completely he was a little bit tired wound up running 11th in that group uh but he does come in the freshest horse and he's the only one in the field with not only a race under his belt in 2019 but it is that win at delta in the big drama at seven and a half furlongs a really really nice uh effort down there where the turns are extremely tight over that six furlong oval um he does need a good pace on the front end to be able to make that move uh late in the lane so i do like the fact that he's two for three uh, at the distance and stewart was actually aboard for that five furlong uh work on the 17th and 101 and four and uh really likes this three-year-old so we'll see uh what the son of trap shot can do and uh i know that the connections are very happy with how he's coming into this event yeah definitely after like uh they were willing to come right back in the big drama and worth noting that seven and a half furlong at delta is a two-turn race, so uh, the the one-turn mile at Churchill and then consecutive two-turn efforts, so like uh, the, the connections feel like this type of race fits this one well, and uh, I printed off PPs before the morning line. Uh, what's this one at? Are you, I'm sorry, are you talking about Boldor? Uh, six or, shooter. Or the PPs for six shooter. Six shooter uh, is morning line at six to one. Six. Okay. Yeah. If, uh, so I mean, I think you are going to get a good value on him. Yeah, I think, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see what Bank it and Gray attempt are at, but uh, I could even see a little higher, and uh, I would definitely be raising my eyebrows if if he were to drift from six uh, off the win at Delta. Uh, one of the potential pace threats, uh, and, and one of several from Steve Asmussen's barn, is uh, Boldor number five. Uh, showed speed on debut uh, when winning at Keeneland uh, and then in the slop uh, made a move but uh, was not as prominently uh, forwardly placed going six and a half. Now gets the mile. Uh, kind of interested to see what with this one uh, in terms of pace uh, with Bankett to his outside and stable mate hot range toddy uh, down in who figures to press as well. Uh, any thoughts for Boulder will be in the race early and late? Well, it's interesting because he's another one that is stretching out and routing for the first time, also making that stakes debut. Um, 
he got a little bumped around after the break in that uh, A of the Van optional 75. It was over the slot. Might have lost his footing a little bit. Ran second to Super Steed. So um, these two are definitely familiar with each other. He does have a stakes, uh, two stakes place siblings. Both of those have been sprinting. So it's interesting to see, you know, what's going to happen as he does stretch out. So, uh, you know, Steve Esmussen, again, five in the springboard. He sends out three in here. Um, but I do like those back-to-back five furlong bullet drills. So the most recent one on the 14th was the fastest of 93. So I do, however, think Boldor is going to have to step up uh, to uh, get a piece of the action, and he's 8-1 to one on the morning line. Yeah, and uh, another one of those uh, that Jack Van Berg uh, could, could affect uh, in, a, in a big way, uh, depending on where they expected to, to be in the race and uh, – Seven hundred thousand dollar buy, and and this is one of those situations, Nancy, where you watch, and if Steve decides to cut this one back, maybe after a speed and fade type effort, would definitely uh, fear this one sprinting, especially after those pedigree stats you quoted. So uh, figures, uh, I, I think, uh, somewhere throughout the race, making a move. Not sure if it's going to be good enough though. Uh, but uh, certainly an interesting prospect uh, throughout the meet, I think, uh, maybe as the, the sprint races uh, gear up for the three-year-olds. Uh, to his outside is for love of country, uh, and I kind of see this this field, uh, three turf efforts. So uh, They gave this one a, a solid try on turf, including two stakes uh, races that uh, just never was able to close from the back of the pack as he did when breaking the maiden. Uh, and then went to a one-turn mile on dirt at Churchill and got a big upset win at 23-1. to 1. Uh, Now tries stakes on dirt. And uh, Joe Bravo, another one of those new names uh, at Oakland this meet, very capable rider. And this one seems dangerous to me. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because, you know, that 23-1 that to 1 upset did come over the slop at Churchill. His only other time on the main, it was sprinting over the slop at Churchill. He ran a, a pretty well-beaten third in a maiden event. So, uh, you know, his only main efforts on a dirt have come over and off track. You know, I don't know if the, uh, if the connections are going to be doing a little rain dance or not. I don't know how that's going to fare. So uh, he does take that step up in class. So there is kind of a question mark looming over his head so I do like that they uh, have recruited Jersey Joe uh, in for this one uh, does have some some decent works the most recent one was just I, I think a five for long maintenance work but prior to that was a very nice drill uh, kind of see kind of let him roll in the morning so uh, he is 12 to 1 a bit of a price uh, but We'll see if uh, he is able to step up to the plate and uh, prove his prove his worth. But he does have a, a sibling who's a multiple stakes winner, but is sprinting on the grass. So uh, we'll see if he can maybe uh, change up the luck for the uh, connections. Yeah. All right. Well, twelve to one definitely uh, is in my wheelhouse for this one. And uh, uh, Sky Mates out of a Quiet American mare. Uh, I don't necessarily as- associate with Brilliance, even though Sky Mesa was a, a Grade One winner or two, but. Uh, typically, they, they've taken a little bit longer to get going, but they paid 300 at a two-year-old sale uh, and now gets two times. So maybe a little closer, and, and I think 12 to 1 is the right price. I would take a shot there. Uh, Bank, it's really interesting to me. Uh, was able to make the lead sprinting uh, in New York, no less. Uh, you know, serious two-year-old program there, even at the state bred level. Uh, and then when... Uh, stretching out to the one-turn mile at Belmont and then the two-turn springboard, uh, open stakes debut, found himself at the back of the pack, and really curious what this one ends up doing in this race, uh, guessing if Jack Van Burton maybe takes a little further back, and if not, Ricardo tries to keep him closer, but seems to be versatile, and Bankett's uh, definitely a key contender for me. I definitely agree with you on that one. It's interesting because, you know, when he was sprinting, he was the speedster, and when stretching out, he likes to come from off the pace. So I think that the versatility of this colt is really impressive to see and got up to run second from well off the pace, beaten only a head to stablemate, long-range toddy. So this could possibly be the better of the two. 
So with Bankett, and uh, Asmussen does recruit his go-to in Ricardo Santana, uh, is 7-2 to two on the morning line and partially owned by Willis Horton, who won this in 2013 with Will Take Charge. Um, I think this is probably going to be one of the top picks in here, might be bet down to be the favorite, and is the lone foal of damn sister in arms. So I think uh might see some, some good things come from Bankett in the future. Got a big first net number uh, when breaking the maiden. He hasn't gotten back to it, but uh, the, the works, uh, especially the, the two back, and then a uh, little off the gas pedal in the last one, maybe circling back uh, to that top effort. So eager to, to see him perform, as I am. Gray Attend, who is uh, just split goals in winning his first two after uh, running into the, the very well met Jack Vanberg. Uh, on debut uh, on Breeders' Cup Day, but it's done nothing wrong since. Uh, as I said, a parakeet to wire effort. Sean Bridge Mahan sees fit to take them out for uh, Mr. Fires and uh, old school connection there uh, down in Hot Springs. And to me, a, a lot to like, especially if Jack Van Berg uh, ends up scratching out. Uh, to me, the biggest impediment uh, might be the outside post. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you there. Yeah, gate to wire scores in the maiden uh two back and then also when stepping up to uh take on stakes runners for the first time in that sugar bowl down at the fairgrounds. So very impressive. I do like that uh Sean is coming up for the mount here in the Smarty Jones and these same connections, uh the owner and trainer teamed up to score in twenty sixteen with discreetness. So can I think can get the two turns. Uh Sired by Gradar, who definitely loves the distance, and Gray Attempt is going those two turns for the first time. So I think that this horse can possibly go out all day, and if he gets out on that front end, which he does look likely to do so, I think he could be dangerous if he's out there uncontested. So very sharp five furlong bullet drill on the 18th in a minute and one fifth, fastest of 60 on that morning. So obviously the the question is that distance, but I think he's uh, he's possibly the real deal. And he, when he came out of that uh Sugar Bowl is the last couple of days on the track. He has looked phenomenal during training hours, so he definitely could be the real thing. All right, and uh, Manny Wan Hog Creek Hustle uh, didn't get the job done in the little comp, but ran on okay uh, to to complete the trifecta under the aforementioned War of Will. So uh, maybe that form hole. I posted some stats to Twitter. His average net uh, speed rating definitely improves. Uh, moving from the sprint to the the middle distance route, so uh, definitely have uh, confidence that, uh, especially on the lead, uh, this one can can make his own way. And to me, is the most likely winner. Uh, we'll see if, uh, for love of country at twelve to one intrigues me. Uh, six shooter, if that one were to drift, but I would love to see, as you said, maybe bank it, take some of that Steve money and uh, Ricardo Santana from the locals, because I think Ray attempt. Uh, is definitely the most likely winner and, and could be worth the price if money goes out. Last, uh, certainly not least, uh, Jack Vanberg, uh, named for the Hall of Fame trainer who trained at Oakland, Thomas Vanberg there now, got a big win uh, on Breeders' Cup Day at Churchill uh, and then took a step back uh, when trying to go gate to wire again uh, in the slop and allowance race. Uh, certainly with Gray attempt in here and then possibly Bulldor as well, little nervous about the trip. He would have to work out from post nine. Uh, but if he runs back to the, the debut win, uh, certainly a factor. Yeah, he did have that outer post in that maiden score, uh, nine of ten. And he didn't like that inner post when breaking over the slop. And John Court, I do like that he is in the irons. John has won the Smarty Jones twice before. He can, uh, The veteran rider can certainly handle the pressure of those bigger races, we all know. Um, and him being the only other speed in the field, I think it's going to be critical. Uh, you know, if there's going to be a speed duel, he is going to hook up with Gray Attempt, who is just to his inside. Side. So uh, he might not have cared for that off go late in the lane. You know, he was beaten uh, by winner Super Steed and Boldor, who finished directly behind him. So, uh, as we mentioned, he is cr entered also in an allowance on Saturday. So we might find out uh, pretty late in the game whether or not he decides to compete in the Smarty Jones. 
All right. Well, we'll certainly be watching that as well as other changes and scratches. And uh, we'll have seven races before this one on Friday to, to get a feel for how maybe the, the track's playing and who's coming in hot, barn and, and jockey-wise. But a uh, of addition of, of this one, uh, have you landed on uh, official top pick, so to speak, yet? Well, you know, it's interesting because – in the 12 running, this would be the 12th running, Santana and Asmussen, neither have won a running of the Smarty Jones. And I'm thinking because he's got three in here, I'm thinking this could possibly be his year. So I am going to go bank it, and directly I'm going to go great attempt right underneath. But I am going to throw right. a six-shooter in my top three. I like it. So uh, from a wagering standpoint, for love of country is is probably the one I'll, I want to, to run with. If Bankett were to win or Six Shooter or Long Range Potty, I don't want to be ripping up tickets, worrying about who else is there for love of country. So that's what I'm sort of thinking about from a wagering standpoint. Great attempt, I would I would say, when push comes to shove, probably going to go on the top spot from a, a pick standpoint. But uh, a, a good race to, to get involved in part of the, the late pick four and late pick five as well. So some opportunities there and uh, can't wait to, to see it all live. Well, it will definitely be a, a great afternoon, uh, regardless of if it is cold or Tim's. I guarantee it's going to be a, a fantastic nine race card, and the grandstand will be packed. Yep, no doubt about that. Great afternoon, great weekend, and a, a great meet all the way. Uh, looking forward to uh, handicapping it throughout the year. And, Nancy, I really appreciate your time. It's my pleasure. All right, everyone, that was the How to Bet the Smarty Thank you again to Nancy. Appreciate her taking the time to go through the field with us and uh, follow along. Uh, we're both on Twitter. Both will be sharing our thoughts as the race gets closer and throughout race day and throughout the meet for that fact. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to handicap the Pegasus later this week. Join us then.